And good morning to all of you. Uh, Honorables Yamagiwa, Mihara, Rwanda Parliamentary Friendship League, JRPFL, Dr. Oh, Mr. Hiroyuki Ishige, Dr. Shiniki Kitaoka, Mr. Hironori Shibata, senior officials and business executives from Japan and from Rwanda, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I want to start by thanking the Japanese External Trade Organization and the Japan International Cooperation Agency for their collaboration in organizing this joint uh, forum. Much has been said about the excellent cooperation between Rwanda and Japan and the good investment prospects in Rwanda, including from those who are actually doing work in Rwanda. My job is simple, but I think it's also important to just welcome you and encourage you to do more business in and with Rwanda. I'm saying this because uh, even listening to the stories that have been uh, uh, told us by the Japanese uh, uh, talent that uh, has visited and uh, deployed their energies in, in our country. They have explained, and we can add more to that by saying, for us in the recovery process, which was talked about in our history, we have identified a number of things that are indispensable for us to continue uh, to grow and develop and towards where Japan and other developed countries are today. So in other words, we are trying to catch up. But we are being helped, assisted, invested in by the very developed uh, countries and people with whom we work. So doing business, uh, the kinds of different investments that we have to make together uh, are very critical. We have identified that as being uh, the center of this development. In other words, uh, the people of RDB, Rwanda Development Board, have already presented to you what we are trying to do in terms of shaping the business environment and how to do, uh, do business easily. You know what to expect. It's a predictable situation we have created. And um, however, this doesn't mean that uh, uh, everything is where we want it to be, so we have to do more every time. And that's why when people kept uh, saying that we need to pay attention to businesses from uh, Japan, I completely agree with them. We need to pay attention. In fact, we try to pay attention. We do. But uh, like in many other areas and many things we try to do, 
uh, it's never going to be enough. We don't feel we are doing enough, which is a good thing because that compels us to keep doing more and better. So we, we, we can't be complacent that we are uh, doing enough, even when uh, experience has shown and uh, data and studies have shown that uh, we are making tremendous progress. We uh, probably number one in this in Africa, or number one or seven or ten in the world. Still, for me, that is a good story, but it always tells me that we have to do more. There is no question about uh, being uh, complacent and, and, and thinking that we have reached where we want to be. So I just wanted to share that story with the people of Japan uh, and promise that uh, we are actually going to pay attention. In, act of, in actual fact, with the young people I saw from Japan making presentations here and then our people who also made the presentations earlier. My main uh, preoccupation was, so after all, we really understand uh, each other, in a sense. We have uh, a set of problems and challenges we have to address, but we have also people who can provide different kinds of solutions to address those challenges. So the question is how best then can we make these loose ends connect, connect directly, quickly, and then we move forward and as fast as we can. I want to assure you that the government of Rwanda will continue to do our best, provide a conducive environment and supportive environment for successful ventures. And the areas in our case have been identified, whether it's in infrastructure, it is in tourism, it is agriculture, it is uh, um, the investments we need in the areas of technology and uh, uh, agriculture and so many things. So we, we, we will not be discriminating as to how and when we pay attention to where the kinds of uh, investments are coming from and we want us to benefit, we want the people making investments with us uh, to uh, benefit as well. The problems of logistics that we are talked about, which are real, uh, as a, a landlocked country, that we have a set of challenges that are slightly different from the challenges other people have. But we also know that uh, there are solutions to that. You, 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 you can uh, experience serious problems physically as a landlocked country, and that has a cost indeed to uh, attach to it. But also knowledge and innovation, as we know, uh, are hard to uh, confine to, to a physical space. So you, you, we have to address this problem by applying knowledge, innovation, to actually render this problem irrelevant. And I think, again, the young people of who made the presentation here from Japan, I think what they were explaining, I was seeing a solution in that, and I'm sure they have seen that even before me. Uh, so we can turn these seemingly huge challenges 
uh, into an opportunity and, and therefore uh, through, through doing business, through innovation, through technologies, we will be able uh, to address all of that. There was mention of um, Kigali Innovation City uh, that has been introduced a while ago as a flagship of Rwanda's uh, vision for an economy based on that knowledge and innovation I, I, I was talking about. We are very keen uh, to attract Japanese firms and institutions as partners in this endeavor because they have, meaning the Japanese firms, the experience that matches our ambition and uh, provides the kinds of uh, solutions we want. I hope that you will find time to attend the roadshow and learn more about this transformative project and other opportunities in our country. The invitation has already been uh, extended to you all. Now, some of uh, you may have heard of uh, a Japanese uh, called uh, Masaya Hattori. This Japanese uh, national who served as the second governor of the National Bank of Rwanda in the 1960s when some of these people who were making presentations from Rwanda were actually not born. They, they didn't know what. Uh, I just wanted to bring that story as to how far in history uh, the cooperation between Rwanda and uh, Japan goes. So if this story started so long ago, and at that time with the different sets of challenges, uh, different levels of uh, development, uh, both ends. I think today we have uh, much more to do, much bigger opportunity uh, to really continue the story of cooperation, of development, bringing together the kinds of uh, talent, talents that are on both sides and uh, therefore uh, take our country as far, or our countries as far as we want to go. Because it means we have been cooperating for more than 50 years. And uh, it's a good story to remember when we are working together I thought I should uh, mention, uh, because uh, with working together on different initiatives and that are innovative, or profitable, business is about profits as well. But we have also known that uh, profitable businesses are more sustainable when they make impact on a society, when they change lives, when they improve lives. So I think that is what is always at the back of our minds. And that's what whatever we do in our country, as again has been said earlier, we are focusing primarily on that, using our talent, our potential that we have in different areas, thinking about how together with the investors who are interested in our country, we can invest reasonably, move fast, and change lives, but also earn profits to the people who have made the investments. And uh, the question is always going to be, how fast can we go? 
uh, and why not? Why not as fast as we can do it? Uh, the story doesn't have to last another 50 years before we get to where we want to be. Now, let me say the final, make mention of the final point I wanted uh, to bring to you. We are talking about Rwanda, and here I represent my country, uh, evidently, and those I have come with to join with uh, you here in Japan as we visited. But the story of Rwanda is also directly linked to the story of the whole continent. And uh, that's why as we deal with our own challenges, we also connect with other countries in our region and uh, across uh, the whole continent. So sometimes one, I have to say, in doing business with us, you can also step from Rwanda to uh, neighboring countries and beyond. As in fact, already what is happening, Japan, Japan's business, businesses already have uh, uh, a foothold in some of the African countries, and from there they step uh, forward to do business with us. So it can always happen the other way. In fact, there was a mention of uh, earlier uh, some of the representations of uh, uh, Japan, best in uh, Nairobi, Kenya, that. Uh, uh, some other parts in East Africa that from there they look at what they can do in Rwanda. It can always happen the other way around depending on what is being uh, looked at. But I wanted to emphasize the how inextricably we are linked, Rwanda and Africa, Africa and Rwanda later on, both with Japan, and therefore that provides a much uh, wider uh, framework in which we can operate and also greater opportunity as such. And that's how we came to the African continental uh, free trade area that was again mentioned, because we are looking at uh, an Africa that can increasingly integrate and also uh, make borders irrelevant in as far as doing business is concerned, which is always going to be attractive for people who uh, from outside of our continent are going to make the investments necessary for us to move forward. Africa's middle class is increasing year in, year out. We is increasing urbanization uh, in Africa, moving faster than uh, probably other continents of this world. Africa has different kinds of resources, starting with uh, our own people and uh, also, the natural resources that we have are enormous. So between the natural resources and the people and the innovation and technology, there is no problem that is not going to be uh, addressed uh, to provide us with the, the solutions we want. But Africa and Rwanda have simply uh, no other choice uh, but to keep adding value to what we we are doing. We cannot just be a source of raw things. In fact, we have become a source of raw people as well. But we need people, raw materials, 
we need to add value and then we can and we can do that with the partnerships we can forge between Africa, Japan, Rwanda, Japan, uh, but we have to be guided by this uh, understanding. So I wish to thank you very much for your kind attention, and I look forward to any questions you have for me, but they don't have to be just questions. They can be solutions and answers. So I'm here to listen to you. Thank you very much. <laughs>